Well, hello, people. I'm back. You know, I almost got a treat today. I always thought about wearing, keep my teeth in, but I had a little bit of toothache, so I just took it out. Y'all should try that sometime. You get a toothache, just take your teeth out. No problem. That's not a joke. I literally took it out because I had a bit of a toothache. Uh, <clears throat> it's a phenomenon. If you lose something like physical self your whole life, you have what they call ghost pains. Like somebody in the war can lose their right arm. And then they can just be sitting around the house or doing whatever, and all of a sudden their right hand will start hurting. Obviously, they don't have a hand, but in their mind, the hand's still there, and it can hurt. And that's what my teeth do every once in a while. Even though they're not there, they'll hurt. And I'll just take them out, which don't help, because they're... I'm not there to hurt, so it don't really make a difference, but it's weird. It's like, man, I thought when I got all these stupid teeth pulled out, I didn't have to worry about these aches and pains anymore, because they used to hurt. Holy cow. There was a couple of times where I was close to just pulling them out with a pair of pliers or something, but my teeth were so bad, I was afraid they would crush and so I'd be stuck with just teeth up in my root and it'd just be even harder to get out so that's the only reason I never pulled my own teeth my grandfather did my dad said my <coughs> grandfather was eating one day and just got aggravated said his teeth had been hurting for a week or something or whatever been hurting for a while he said he just went over, rummaged through the drawers for a minute, found a pair of pliers, stuck them in his mouth, and then wiggled them around, and doop, and pulled his own teeth. I know why, when I had all them teeth aches, it's like, whoosh. I wasn't more worried about them crushing them and just... They were so bad, I wasn't so worried about them just crushing instead of pulling out. I would have done it in a heartbeat. They used to hurt. So anyway, sorry. You didn't get to hear me talk with my teeth in today. <laughs> oh, I am going to do a treat for y'all. I show all my description and stuff. I tell you about how um, I'm a veteran. I didn't like get blown up in the war and, have, and all this craziness. I used to, I did go on convoys, do some convoy escorts and stuff. I did see a 510 truck three feet off the ground when IED blew up under it. That was about it for me. I didn't kill the people in it. It, was, <laughs> it scared the shit out of them. It startled the snot out of them. We did escorts for the Iraqi army. And one time we're out on the convoy and shit. And we're going, we're cruising along. And the funny part is, is we, I was with a MIT team. So we had a weird hierarchy with us we had a major was like our top person and then under the major we had five captains over different stuff and then we had a master sergeant acting as our first sergeant and I'm trying to remember, I think he was a E7. So we had this 
Sergeant First Class. Well, he wasn't Sergeant First Class. He was Navy. I don't remember what E7 is in Navy. But anyway, that was our medic. And <clears throat> it was just crazy. It was a weird structure we had. So anyway, the major was paranoid. He was he always he was doing he was a little crazy, scared of getting killed while we were over there, but it paid off. <clears throat> At the last minute, he changed up our normal routine. We normally had the lead vehicle, somebody in the middle, and then somebody in the back. In the rear we're supposed to be escorting these Iraqi army and protecting them help keep them safe and all this well he decided no we've been doing this for too long it's been weeks or months or whatever you know it, it, it literally been months and stuff and just for some reason he decided on this trip he's gonna bump the lead vehicle back one or two I can't remember, I think he just did one. And then he offset us from the middle back or up one or something. And then instead of us being at the very rear of the convoy, we were like one in. So he staggered us up, offset us and stuff. And it freaking paid off. The crazy bastard <laughs> actually saved our lives or whatever. So we go out and we're on the damn convoy. We've been driving and fuck, it takes forever to get somewhere. Because <clears throat> the stick of vehicles only did like 55 or something. So you just like held the gas to the floor and got up to 50, 55 and just cruised. And we're cruising, we're going down the road, and then just all of a sudden, hub. Boom! We see a five ten truck up in the lead. Just come about three foot up off the ground, and boom, bam, slams back down. Everybody just locks it down. Keep running into them. It was a trip, and then as the smoke settling and all that, like a minute or two later. Two Iraqis that were in the truck, they get out and they're you know, just stumbling and kind of, you know, half out of it, but they're, on, they're walking, they're in one piece, but they're kind of staggering down the road. <laughs> of course, we were just like, hot damn, better you than me. <laughs> That was a trick. But anyway, point is, I'm gonna do my blood pressure check here. I tell in my, I say my description and all that stuff. I'm a bit with high blood pressure. I had good blood pressure when I went into the military. I had good blood pressure through my first deployment. I leave him for my second deployment. It was a little high. But, you know, I didn't think nothing of it. Like, when I'm going on deployment, I already know what I went through the first time, so I really wasn't looking forward to it. And. Like I said, everything went okay other than that one incident for the most part. But my wife was cheating on me. And she didn't just cheat on me and stuff. <laughs> she got pregnant. It's like, holy shit, really? I'm on my third marriage, so she knew my first wife cheated on me. She knew what I went through with my first wife. We were separated and she'd been bouncing back and forth between two different guys. 
for a couple of years before we finally got divorced. She was just running around with these other couple of guys while we were still married. And I don't know what happened. She was good. We had a good marriage. We were together five or ten years. It was a long time. And for some fuck reason, I go on my second deployment. And... I don't know, she's fucking got a wild hair grass or something. Running around with her boss. Holy shit, it's up worse than normal right now. Look at this shit. Tell me that's a normal blood pressure range. See that? You know, it can clear her off. How about there? 224 over 156 at pulse 99. Tell me that's normal. That's bullshit, that's what it is. Damn it. That's actually not good. I don't know. Last time it was that high, I had to go to the emergency room. It's not good. <clears throat> so I'm going to have to keep an eye on it today. It's a day of my life. I'm just trying to stay alive. trying I smoked off and on since I was a kid I got bounced I started out dipping I told back like in my earlier video I had this gold can and rings in my back pocket that people would dip yet I had those when I was just a child and one time I had a I got an infection or something in my behind my lip where I normally put my dip and it got to the point where it hurts so bad my eyes start watering when I put the dip in I was like ah it's like well, I can't dip but I need to dip I want my care for my nicotine so I started smoking I was smoking cigarettes to get my nicotine craving on and then it took a long time for a stupid sore to heal in my mouth. So by then I got used to smoking. And then anyway, I flip flop back and forth. I finally quit again earlier this month. I think the last cigarette I had was the eight. So I haven't smoked since the ninth. So I'm doing good. I've made it a few weeks now without a cigarette. And I'm hanging in there. It has helped some with my blood pressure, but I'm doing all this other shit too. I'm like I'm taking some vitamin D right now. I'm taking my CoQ10, this is supposed to be good stuff for my heart and blood pressure and everything, but I just recently started taking that, so it's going to take a while for it to take effect. And I'm doing Omega-3, but I'm doing the good shit. I'm doing the algae Omega. That's something I did research on, I found out. Fish don't have omega-3s. Everybody thinks, oh, we got to take fish. Well, I did a little research. I love to research. Fish eat algae to get omega-3 in their system. And we eat the fish. And we're having to break down the fish and get the omega-3 out of the fish. Well, this is going straight... 
not having to process it twice, basically. Instead of the fish eating the algae, getting it into their system, then us eating the fish and having to process the fish to get to the algae. You know what I mean? I'm trying to just, anytime I can, I try to cut straight to the source. And then I got this. This is another little fun fact that I didn't know until I did my research. If you don't have K, you don't get this K to process the D, you don't get the D. So I'm doing KD. It's K2, D3. So I'm getting a vitamin D in. Because I don't know what happened. But when I was on deployment, <clears throat> just drinking water by the gallon. I mean, Jesus, it's so hot over there. It's ridiculous. It's like living in an oven or something. The air is so hot, it just sucks you dry. So anyway, when I come back and they do like a full checkup at me at the VA and stuff to see if I'm okay and blah, blah, blah. And they say, well, your blood pressure's a little high. And it's like, yeah, no shit. And then, like, oh, and your vitamin D is low. Like, not low. We mean, like, abnormally low. But he's like, the low, you got a range, they said, of something like 12 to 81 or something like that there was like this little scale of whatever they went by they said normal range was something like 12 to 81 or something like that and they said mine was something like seven it's like what <laughs> so i guess my bones and everything were like paper and shit i guess if i'd been like an old man if i fell i would have broke a hip or something I don't know, they didn't tell me that part. Like, what does that mean? But, yeah. My vitamin D was shit. <sighs> that was years ago. I mean, I, I took what they gave me for until I ran out. And then I quit. And I drank milk and done this and that and the other and whatever. And that was like 12 years ago. No, I came back 11 years ago. I came back 2010 <clears throat> from my last deployment. So I've had a good 11 years to get my calcium back up. I don't know. <clears throat> I'm sure it didn't help with my blood pressure and stuff. That's probably part of the problem. Fucking deployments like that are so bad and people don't think about it and realize that, especially if you do multiple deployments, you're just like draining your body, all your vitamins and minerals, just drinking that water nonstop. And yeah, you can do Gatorade and all this stuff and little packs flavor your water, so. but that's not replacing your vitamins and shit. You're still flushing all your vitamins out of your body when you drink water in excess like that. Just water, water, water flushes your system all your vitamins. And so that's something they don't tell you. I found that out after I returned and came back from deployment. And they're like, oh, that's normal. It happens to all the vets. We're getting more research now and stuff. But when they come back, it's drinking so much water to stay hydrated is depleting people of their vitamins and stuff so it's normal you're okay blah 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 it's like well it might be normal but that's what happens but it don't mean it's okay whatever anyway hope you all enjoyed that you got to see my blood pressure and talk to you a little bit about one of my deployments. I still got plenty of shit I can share. But for now, later taters. This is Hillbilly Dean signing off.